Without Master P and No Limit Records, artists like the Migos and Gucci Mane wouldn't even be around today. Most rap fans have no idea about the wild story of how Master P and his label completely dominated the game and put Southern hip hop on the map. So today, we're breaking it all down. Master P came up in New Orleans in a wild area of the city called the Calio Projects. The Calio Projects started out as cheap homes for working class families, but by the time P was growing up there, it had become one of the most brutal areas in the city. Gangs were fighting over the turf every day and bringing drugs into the neighborhood, and in less than 20 years, almost 100 people were murdered there. Master P and his homies were active in the streets, but he had plans of making it out of the trenches and into the NBA. He got a scholarship to play for the University of Houston, but in his freshman year, he messed his knee up and transferred out to Oakland, California to study business administration instead. Master P knew he couldn't go back to New Orleans because there was nothing but death and violence waiting for him there. He told XXL that he was getting into a lot of trouble before he left and all of his friends were dying young. Master P wanted to get his family out of the trenches and it all started in California. While he was out west, Master P suffered a loss that eventually turned him into a millionaire. His grandfather was killed in a work accident at a hospital in New Orleans and P ended up getting 10K out of the settlement. P had already been making beats and writing rhymes. He was producing for a crew called 12 Gauge and the Hit Squad. Master P was making his own music and selling it out of the trunk of his car too. And when the settlement money hit, he used the tragedy to level up his career and opened up a record store called No Limit Records. At the same time, he started a crew called the Real Untouchables, aka True, with two of his brothers, C. Murda and Silk the Shocker, his wife, and a bunch of homies. They put out their first project, Mind of a Psychopath, in 1990 and were trying to break into the West Coast scene. But that same year, Master P suffered another huge loss. P's brother, Kevin Miller, was still in New Orleans at the time and was allegedly moving weight in the street. It's not clear exactly what went down, but Kevin ended up getting murdered and Master P started going even harder in the boot. He had already lost a ton of friends and family to the streets, and he was ready to do whatever it took to keep more of them from dying. Master P dropped his first solo album in 91 and was grinding even harder in the industry. He started opening up for huge artists like Tupac, and everywhere he went, he kept a trunk full of tapes to sell at the shows. Instead of trying to sign with a major label, Master P stayed independent and started signing local artists to no limit. For the next couple of years, P and the rest of the crew were releasing music at a crazy pace. He wasn't trying to compete with dudes like Tupac in the West or Nas in the East and be the most lyrical. Master P just wanted to give the fans music they could vibe to and felt real. P was trying to put a lot of people on in the West Coast, but back then, they weren't getting a lot of attention. He wanted to get the label popping and turn everyone into stars. But the first few years were tough. Back then, it looked like it might not work out for No Limit. But then he moved back to New Orleans and everything changed. A lot of the West Coast rappers decided to stay out there instead of following No Limit to Louisiana. But Master P didn't have any problems finding new artists to work with like Mystical, Lil Mac, and Soldier Slim. The rappers were obviously important for the label. But the biggest win for No Limit was when Master P linked up with a producer named KLC. KLC came up in the projects but had a lifetime of experience with music too. His dad was a saxophone player and in the 80s, KLC started producing beats. He linked up with his homies Moby Dick, Craig Bazile, and Odell Vickers Jr. to make a production team called Beats by the Pound, and they're the ones who helped take No Limit to the next level. The first No Limit project they worked on was a compilation called Down South Hustlers Bouncing and Swinging, which had features from legendary artists like DJ Screw, UGK, and MJG. 95 was a huge year for the label. Master P dropped his 99 Ways to Die EP, his artist Mia X started popping off, and True scored one of their biggest hits when they dropped the track, I'm Bout It Bout It. Master P's whole plan was to drop so much music that nobody could ignore them, and since they were still independent, they could release new projects whenever they wanted without anyone telling them what to do. Major labels had been reaching out for years, but P always turned them down because he didn't want to give up a bunch of money to someone else for no reason. Back then, if you signed with a major label, they pretty much ran your life and took most of the money you made off record sales, merch, and everything else. But Master P changed the whole game. The early years out in California didn't put his name in the mainstream, but P was building up his pockets the whole time. In 92, he sold over 150k records. Then in 94, his third album cleared a quarter million in sales and put 900k in the No Limit bank account. Priority Records have been trying to sign him for a few years, but Master P took his time and learned the business side of the industry. Jimmy Iovine had even offered him a mill to sign with him back in the day, but P knew the deal wasn't right. In 95, 
Priority tried to sign him again. In that time, Master P told them he just wanted a distribution deal. Priority was a huge label at the time and had dudes like Ice Cube and Jay-Z signed, but the rappers were only getting like 12% of the cut. Master P wasn't trying to give all his money away, so he told them he wanted an 85% cut and to keep his own masters too. Priority clapped back and said he could have the deal if he put up his own marketing money, but that wasn't an issue for P because he had already been stacking his bread for years. P's deal with Priority was huge for the label. The biggest rappers in the world were losing millions because of their contracts, and Master P showed everyone that they didn't have to work like that. He wasn't getting greedy with the bag either. It was easy for No Limit to sign new artists because Master P was handing out big racks and wanted everyone to win. No Limit was on a crazy run with all kinds of gold and platinum records. And in 97, Master P leveled up again with the album Ghetto D. He sold over 750k copies in the first week and ended up going triple platinum. And the single Make Him Say Uh became a certified classic. Master P's deal with Priority Records didn't just change the industry though. It also saved Snoop Dogg's life. At the same time P was taking over the southern hip-hop game, Suge Knight and Death Row were running the west coast. Dr. Dre and Suge started Death Row and popped off from the jump. Dre brought Snoop Dogg in to help with his debut album, and Snoop became a star overnight. He came up in the streets repping the Rolling 20 Crips in Long Beach, but he was trying to switch up how he moved and make it in the music industry and get out of the streets. Linking up with Dre and Death Row was huge, but while he was recording his debut album for the label, Snoop got wrapped up in a murder case that almost sent him away for life. A local gangster named Philip Older Merriam had been trying to press Snoop and allegedly put a gun to his head at a gas station. Then one day, Snoop was chilling on the block with some homies when Philip and some goons rolled through and started yelling at them. After Philip and his crew took off, Snoop and his homies hopped in the Jeep and found them in a local park. Both sides started yelling at each other again, and that's when Philip pulled his gun, but was killed by Snoop's bodyguard before he could let off a shot. Snoop was already trying to leave the trenches behind, but fighting the murder case really made him want to focus on spreading positivity instead of hating violence. But at the same time he was trying to turn his life around, everyone at death row was ready for war. Dre left the label because he was tired of all the drama, so Snoop and Pac had the label on their backs. Snoop had a lot of love for Pac, but he wasn't trying to beef with everyone like the rest of Death Row and it almost got him killed. Snoop went to New York with the rest of Death Row and showed love to Biggie and Diddy on the radio instead of sending shots. Uh, Biggie Smalls, he's an artist that I, you know what I'm saying, I listen to his music, I love his work, there's no beef, it's nothing personal, I don't hate him and I don't disrespect him and I love what he do. And that's when everything changed. The next day they were all supposed to fly back to California, but when they got to the private plane, Suge wouldn't let Snoop's bodyguards fly with him. Snoop's security knew something was up and tried to get him to go with them instead of getting on the plane, but he wasn't about to back down. He got on the flight and nobody would even talk to him, so he grabbed a knife and fork and sat in the back of the plane because he thought they might try to take him out right there. Pac ended up dying just a few days later, and that's when Snoop knew he had to get away from Suge and Death Row. Suge wasn't gonna just let him walk away like that though, and the situation was crazy tense. Rumors say there was a bag on Snoop's head after he walked away from Death Row. And if Master P didn't step in, there's a good chance Snoop wouldn't even be alive today. After Snoop left Death Row, he started hanging around the Priority Records office and kicking it with dudes like Mac 10. At the time, Snoop was working on the whole disc project and that should call Fuck Death Row, and Mac was gonna give him a meal for the record. Do you realize that that saved my life? Like Master P saved my life. I was gonna put an album I called Fuck Death Row. And Mac 10 was gonna give me a million dollars to put it out. Snoop's issues with Suge and Death Row weren't just gonna stay in the industry though. Dudes had already been dying over the war between the East and West Coast, and Suge had an army of shooters ready to take out anyone he had issues with. Snoop told The Breakfast Club he was trying to get some bloods on his side because he knew he was gonna need backup going to war with Suge. But luckily, Master P stepped in and stopped it from happening. One day, when Snoop was in the building where Priority Records was at, he walked by and started talking to P's homie Mystical. Mystical and Snoop didn't know each other then, but there was a lot of mutual respect, so Mystical told him to come back so they could link up in the studio. Snoop hopped on the track with him that night and ended up meeting Master P. When P asked Snoop how much he wanted for the verse, Snoop told him he'd take like 1.5k. He had just left death row and didn't have any money, so even getting that would've helped Snoop out a lot. But when he came back the next day, Master P handed him a check for 35 grand and they started chopping it up. Master P asked Snoop what he was working on, and when Snoop told him about the Fuck Death Row album, Master P told him it was a bad move and that he wouldn't even be alive to see the record drop. Snoop had fought hard to leave all the street drama behind him, but his beef with Suge Knight almost brought him right back into it. Snoop told the Breakfast Club that Master P saved his life right there. 
If he had dropped a diss record aimed at Shug, there's no telling what would have happened. But luckily, Snoop signed with No Limit instead and dropped his album, The Game Is To Be Sold, Not To Be Told. 98 was the biggest year in No Limit history. Bringing in Snoop was a huge win for the label, but the rest of the crew was putting in crazy work too. That year, No Limit took over the game and dropped an insane 23 projects. 10 of them went platinum and 11 went gold. Nobody had ever done anything like that before, and it seemed like No Limit was going to be running the game for decades. But right after Master P and No Limit hit their crazy peak, everything started falling apart overnight. Mr. Servon was one of the first dudes Master P signed to No Limit. They were homies in school, and Serve linked up with the No Limit crew for the first time back in 94. He was never the biggest artist on the label, but without Serve, No Limit would have never hit the same highs. After No Limit moved to New Orleans around 95, Serve was the one who brought in KLC and the rest of the Beats by the Pound crew to be No Limit's in-house producers. Their crazy work ethic and style meant that No Limit could put out more projects than anyone else in the game, and the rappers on the label didn't want to work with any producers besides them. For most of the time, No Limit didn't even use contracts. Master P ran the label like a family business and gave everyone way more money than he had to. Mr. Servon told Underground Society back in 2013 that they were getting a 50-50 split with the label and the artists even got to keep their own masters. Master P treated everyone right, but when the major labels got involved, the situation went off the rails. In 99, P was working on a new deal with Priority Records and needed some real contracts to get signed. It's clear he wasn't trying to play anyone, but KLC and the rest of Beats by the Pound wanted to get a lawyer just to check out the contract and make sure it was all good. It shouldn't have been any kind of issue, but Master P got pressed about it and ended up destroying the label. Master P didn't get why KLC and the other dudes wouldn't just sign the contract, and while he was on a phone meeting with the lawyers, P said, man, they don't want to sign, fuck them. What he didn't know is that Beats by the Pound were on the call too and heard everything. Serv said Master P didn't really mean anything about it and that he was just heated over the situation, but that's when everything changed. Master P could have fixed the situation if he just reached out and apologized, but Sir said he was too stubborn back then and wouldn't make the call. And by the time P was ready for a sit down, Beats by the Pound had already moved on and was getting their own deals. Losing Beats by the Pound was a huge blow to the label. The rappers on No Limit were pressed about it and didn't want to use Beats by anyone else, and a ton of them jumped ship right after Beats by the Pound left. No Limit had a couple of successful records in 2000 and 2001, but then even more artists left, including Snoop Dogg. Master P's deal with Priority expired the same year, so he ended up going to Universal Records and rebranding the label as the new No Limit. P's brother C. Murder split off and made True Records, but in 2002, he got caught up in a case that landed him in prison for life. In January 2002, there was a fight outside of a nightclub in Harvey, Louisiana, and C. Murder allegedly beat and shot a teenager named Steve Thomas to death. That wasn't the only case he was involved with, though. A year before that, C. Murder upped his strap at the owner of another club and let off a shot when they wouldn't let him in the spot with his gun. He pleaded guilty to attempted second-degree murder and got off easy with just 10 years and time served, but he wasn't as lucky during the murder trial. The trial was a mess from the jump. The prosecution said C. Murder's homies were threatening witnesses, then the jury deadlocked and couldn't agree to convict him or not. He ended up getting convicted with a vote of 10 to 2, but apparently there was even more drama going on behind the scenes. One of the women who wanted to let him free was allegedly bullied by the other jurors, and one of them said in an interview, they literally made this 20-year-old girl so violently ill, she was throwing her guts up. She couldn't function anymore. Master P fought hard to get everybody out of the trenches, but he still ended up losing his brother to prison. He tried to keep his head up and stay on the grind, but by 2003, No Limit had fallen off so badly, they had to file for bankruptcy. What a lot of fans never understood is why No Limit and Cash Money never linked up. Master P and Birdman were running two of the hottest labels in the game and were both based in New Orleans, but their artists never worked together in the booth. It seemed like it would have been a huge win for both crews if they collabed, but it turns out that there was some deadly street beef getting in the way. Back in 2019, Birdman went on Drink Champs and said that there was never any beef and that Master P and him just weren't rocking with each other. But according to Birdman's half-brother, Terrence Gangsta Williams, there's way more to the story. Birdman and his people are from the Magnolia Projects, and back in the day, they were in an all-out war with Master P's Calliope hood. Gangsta went on DJ Vlad and said there were rumors going around that Master P put a bag on his head because he thought Gangsta killed his cousin. Then one of Gangsta's brothers got hit up in the Calliope projects while he was driving his truck. Before all the beef started, Magnolia and Calliope were actually clicked up and would beef with other hoods together. 
In 96, Master P was shooting a movie called I'm About It and Gangsta was supposed to be in it. The movie has a ton of No Limit people in it and linking up with Birdman's family like that could have been huge on the industry side. It's not clear exactly why they fell out, but Gangsta and his homies ended up going to war with Calliope and after that, there was no chance that No Limit and Cash Money were gonna link up. No Limit might have fallen off as a label, but Master P never stopped winning. He got into movies, clothes, jewelry, book publishing, and snacks. P racked up hundreds of millions just in the music industry, and he used that cash to level up and started making even more with his investments. No Limit isn't around anymore, but Master P inspired a whole generation of rappers to hustle hard in the game. He went from selling tapes out of his trunk to running one of the biggest labels in rap history, and that's why even the OGs call him a legend.